Hi there. Welcome to DIYs at the Schwalben's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. First of all, Happy New Year to all of my YouTube community. I hope you had a wonderful holiday season and are looking forward to what 2024 has to bring. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a reusable stencil with your Cricut machine or any other cutting machine that you have. I'm going to show you how you can use a stencil to create it, then you're going to use it on a tea towel or any other type of fabric so you can make pillows, t-shirts, tea towels, any type of decor for your home or maybe even as gifts and you might even want to sell some of them. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope you learn something new and without further ado, let's get started. The very first thing that you need to do is get a stencil type font because we can't just use a regular stencil. And here I am on Creative Fabrica. I love this site. Right now, you can get your yearly all access at $3.99 a month. That's only 47 bucks a year. Oh my gosh. And it's discounted forever. That price is going to go up because I've seen it go up as high as $5.99, $6.99 a month. So if you're into all sorts of different type of creating and crafting and you would just want to get everything that you can go ahead and grab this. I love this because it has commercial licenses with everything. That means you can actually take the images, do something to them and then sell them. So what we're going to do is type in stencil font in the search bar here. And then let's take a look at a different types that we're going to get 819 results. That's a ton of them to take a look at. But I'm looking for something specific. I want to make sure that the E's and the O's, all of the vowels and the letters that are going to be closed up that would have a circle on the inside of them, we need to make sure that those are going to have a break in them. That's what a stencil is all about. So some of them might look like or say that they're a stencil. This is one of my favorites, Babette. This is a really nice one too. Nice regular letters, but you can see that all of the areas there where they would normally connect are open. My favorite one is called Repad, and it's going to come up here in a second. And this is the one that we're going to download today. Go ahead and click the green download button, and then that's going to end up in the downloads folder of your computer. That's where we're going to go next. And you're going to see that it is a zipped file, as you can see here on my screen. That means we have to right click it and then choose extract all. Now, this is for a Windows computer. I'm not sure how you do it for a Mac because I'm not a Mac girl, but uh, I'm sure you can probably find how to do that. If you wanted to change the folder, you could click on browse like I just did. If not, let's just extract it right to our downloads. Then what we're going to do is open the folder. You're going to double click it and then go to the first one, right click and select install. You don't have to install both of them. One is just an open type font and the other is a true type font. Honestly, there's absolutely no difference. The next step is to move into your Cricut Design Space app or any app that you're using for the type of machine that you have. You're going to add a text box and then we're going to type in a phrase. I'm going to just type in pretty sure I seized the wrong day. Then once we have that text in there, we're going to need to change the text. So I'm going to go move up to the font box and click the download button. And here is where I'm not going to go in the Cricut systems, I'm going to use my system. And that means that these are all the fonts that are installed in my computer. Let's type in the word repad and hit enter. And there it is. So you're going to click on it. And then once you click away, you can see that my text is now changed into that font style, which is perfect. Here, when I zoom it in, you can see that there are all these breaks where normally there would be a little circle and it cuts it open. So you can make sure that your stencil is all going to be in one piece and you're not going to miss out on any of the little bits and pieces. On these tea towel images, I like to add a little flourish or a little design. So I'm going to go over to the images and I'm going to choose something. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is type in flourish and flourish just means something that's very fancy. 
a, just like a little bit of an addition to your text. You can see there's a whole bunch of different designs here. What you have to make sure of though is that you don't choose anything that is going to have some circles on the inside because you need that to be all open. Otherwise, it's going to be like not using the stencil font again. You're going to miss out on some of the pieces. Now, these are really fancy and they're a lot thicker. This one is kind of nice. Um, I have changed over to divider and divider just gives you more of a streamlined effect. Again, making sure that you don't choose anything that has any circles on the inside. This is the one I like to use a lot. So let's click on it and we'll add it to our canvas. Once it pops on your screen, just drag it over to where you want it to be. And you can also just resize it using the corner handles. Now I'm going to use my shift button and select both of these, or I can use my mouse to click and drag over both of them. And I'm going to go up to the alignment tool and make sure that they are centered horizontally. Then I'm going to hit group. And then I'm going to go down to the combine button and I'm going to select weld because I want this to be all cut out as one single piece. And there you go. You've just created your first stencil in Cricut. This is the material that I like to use for reusable stencils. It's called plastic poster board and it's available at Michael's here in Canada. It's I think 239 something like that so it's really worthwhile you it's the size of a regular piece of poster board so I can probably get about 10 stencils out of this really really cost effective I'm going to cut a piece out and I'm going to leave a good one and a half to two inches of space around the outside because I want to be able to hold on to the stencil when I'm on my fabric now, what I'm going to be putting it on is a strong grip cutting mat. This is just one that I picked up off of Amazon. You don't have to get the Cricut brand. All of these other ones work just the same. So I'm just going to make sure that I get it on there really well, make sure that it's sticking really well. You can see that it's actually changing a bit of color. Then that's going to tell me that it's stuck to my mat really good. Now we'll move over to the machine. And as I'm feeding this in, I'm going to put on the screen here what you need to do for this. Number one, you need a machine that is going to be compatible with these types of materials. So the Cricut Explorer, I know, does it. And I know the Cricut, the next one up, the really big one. I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, you also need a deep cut blade. And that's the black blade that you see here in there. Then you're going to set your material to corrugated cardboard. And then the pressure, you're going to add more. So instead of the default, you want to select more. And that is just going to make sure that it goes through on one pass. Once it's completed, you need to pull the plastic off of your mat. But you need to be very, very careful. You don't want to rip anything. Some of these cuts are really small. The majority of the letters will probably stay on your mat, but some of them may not. So you'll just have to kind of pick at them and get them out. But again, go really slow and just make sure that you're not going to rip any of the plastic pieces. Here's what it looks like, and I have a lot of cleaning up to do on the back of it. But again, very carefully, I'm just going to start grabbing everything that doesn't belong and pull it off. And usually it's just hooked on by a little tiny, tiny little piece. There's really never any issue of something that hasn't cut through all the way. So you may need to play around with your machine to see which settings work best. I did have to do that for a little bit at the beginning when I first started to do this, but now it's old hat for me. I've been doing this for years. So I hope this is helpful for you. And then let's get to the next step. Before I move on to the next step, I'm going to show you a quick tip on how to get all of the rest of those little letters and things off of your mat. I just go with the Cricut scraper. I put my mat partially inside a little bin or wherever I'm going to be collecting the garbage, and then I just scrape everything off. And just be aware that they do kind of fly around. So I did have some vegetable soup all over my carpet because I had all of these little, or sorry, alphabet soup all over my carpet. But anyway, this is a, the best way to clean it off.
Now it's time to get the tea towel prepped and ready for the stencil. I have some parchment paper underneath the first layer to make sure that the rest of the fabric is protected. And I just tape it down with some painter's tape. I'm going to take some additional painter's tape and use that to hold the stencil down and make sure that it's nice and straight. I'm using one of the sponges that you can get from the Dollar Tree with a clothespin. And the paint that I'm using is Folk Art Multi-Surface in Black Satin. And this is a paint that you can heat set. So that's why I like to use this one. So I'm just going to offload some of the paint from the sponge, making sure that I don't have a lot on it because I don't want to have any bleeding. So I'm going to go ahead and start pouncing and you can see what's happening here. And I'm going to go over it twice. So I'm going to do a very light coat for the first one. And then the second time around, I'm going to do a darker coat, a little bit more of the paint on it, just to make sure that I can get all of the design completely covered. Now I'm starting with the second coat and I'm going to go a little bit more aggressively this time. I'm going to make sure that I have everything filled in, all of the little corners and edges. I want to make sure that all of my lettering is really nice, clean, and crisp. Again, though, making sure that I take off the majority of the paint because I don't want anything to bleed outside of those lines. Next, I'll very gently pick up the painter's tape and the stencil and then just pull it off and look at the beautiful design I've got. It turned out really well and I'm so excited. I love making these and I think they're so much fun. I let the tea towels dry for at least a couple of hours and sometimes overnight. And I'm using my HTB Rond automatic heat press for this, but you can use a regular heat press if you have a manual one, and you can also use an iron for this. You're going to set it for 325 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 seconds, and that is going to set that paint right into the fabric and make it machine washable safe. You will want to keep the parchment in between the layers of the tea towel to make sure that none of the ink gets pressed onto the back side of it. And you'll want to cover up the top side, as you saw me do, with some type of material. You can use butcher paper, parchment paper. I just happen to have a Teflon sheet. And that will just protect my press from getting any ink on it. Set these aside and let them dry and then pull out the parchment paper. And you've got a beautiful product that you can keep for yourself, make as gifts, or sell locally on Facebook Marketplace or even on Etsy and make yourself a little bit of extra cash. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new that you can do with your Cricut and a little bit of paint and a stencil. I will have some of these designs available up on my Etsy shop. So if you're interested, go take a look. The link will be down in my description box, along with all of the other products that I used in this video. Thanks so much for spending some of your time with me today. I truly appreciate it. Make sure you do all the buttons. Hit that subscribe, the notification bell, and the like button. See you in the next one.